Let's pray and start. Father, we want to thank you, God, for this nice time you have given us. Lord, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy, Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for all the good things that you are doing. And Holy Spirit, as I speak right now, Jesus, I pray that you would take complete control, God, and the right word will come from my mouth, God. And Lord, I pray that you would take complete control of this message. And Lord, I pray that this message will be a seed and it will bear fruit in Jesus' name, God. Amen. Okay, so as we've been meditating upon Christmas, we've been meditating upon the birth of Jesus and we, as we've been learning from Luke chapter 1, we've been trying to understand what God is trying to tell us and I'm so excited to bring the word to you today. I'm really excited because from Luke chapter 1, we see how the angel of the Lord came and spoke to Mary and, jo Mary and the plan between Mary and Joseph has been interrupted. The interruption was for acceleration, the interruption for a better purpose. And we see the attitude of Mary when the angel of the Lord said that she is going to conceive under the unction of the Holy Spirit. And all she said was, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel of the Lord left. And we also see that Mary just praised God, worshipped God. She hurried up. She arose from her place. She hurried up. Whenever a prophetic word comes, what should we do? The learning from the word is that we need to move we need to get into action and we need to start working towards the voice of God because when God speaks we have to obey and obedience is going to open opportunities for each one of us and let's start looking into our Bible from Luke chapter 1 and verse 48 onwards it is written so beautifully in verse 48 it says for he has looked with loving care on the humble state of his maid servant for behold from now all the generations will count me blessed and happy and favored by god here you see that mary is saying that she is the maid servant maid servant for god and she's also saying that humbly humble state of the maid servant whenever we are humble whenever we are in line with the word of god god uses us god elevates us only when we are humble and today god is looking for people who can really god is looking for people who can really pick up the gospel pick up the fire catch the Rema word of God and go into the marketplace and start talking about the love of God and and the hope which we have in Christ Jesus. Here we see Mary saying that I have been humble and verse 49 talks about for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Here, Mary, we need to once understand how blessed is this young lady here. After listening to the voice of the angel, she said, be it unto me according to your word. And then she started saying that her actions started to meet the expectation from God. And that is where we see. And one more thing we need to observe is she started praising God no matter what is happening. She put her reputation at stake and then she started praising God and worshipping God. In verse 49 we are seeing that he who is mighty has done great things for me. She is reminding herself. This is the key point for today. We have to remind ourselves of what God is doing in our life and what he has done in the past. We have to count our many blessings. But today the irony of the story is as Christians, even though we are Christians, we believe in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, we attend meetings, we give our tithes, we give our offerings, we, we are very prayerful, we are very respectful to others. But things like this we need to look upon is we need to count our blessings. We are counting our problems, we are counting our enemies, we are counting our weaknesses, hence we are empowering what we are focusing. If you are focusing on your problem today, you are going to empower your problem so today it's a reminder from luke chapter 1 and verse 49 from the life of mary the actions what we always love to read from the bible saying that she says that he has done great things for me and holy is his name what is mary doing she's telling that god has done great things and she's excited about what is going to happen because she heard the inside information from the angel she heard the inside information in power of praise we've been looking at how david got inside information how jehoshaphat got inside information how hannah got inside information and we are seeing this now mary has also got some inside information which is the prophetic word of god and here we see so beautifully mary is saying that and holy is his name when she's referring to God, she's referring it as holy is his name to be worshipped in his purity and majesty and glory. Here we have an expression of worship again. How is Mary worshipping God? She's worshipping God with her actions. And then we also see that she has worshipped God with purity of his purity, his majesty and glory. Amen. 
I just want everybody to just close your eyes wherever you are. Just close your eyes if you're able to do it. If you're driving and listening to this audio or to this message, I don't recommend you to close your eyes. But if you are in a position where you can close your eyes, just think about heaven. Just think about the glory of God. Just think of just think of the glory of God filling the whole place. Tonight, I want to encourage you the same glory can come into your room only if you desire. And when you desire, when you worship him, when you start thinking about his majesty, I want to encourage each one of you whenever the devil tries to attack you with guilt shame and other things like that which are not at all encouraging you or motivating you i want to tell you tonight that you need to remind yourself about the majesty of god you need to remind yourself about the purity of god you need to remind yourself that he is full of glory and no matter where you are all you have to do is just lift up your hands and start worshiping him like never before just give him the glory. Just give him the honor. Just give him the praise. No matter what you are going through in your life, I do not know whether you are going through depression right now. I do not know whether you are going through disappointment right now. Or I do not know whether you are having a mountaintop experience or you are having a valley deep experience. But I want to encourage you tonight. Our God is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you want to be favored by God like Mary did, is there anybody in the house tonight who wants to lift their hand right now and say, I want that favor. But if you want to experience that favor, you need to pay a price for it. You need to pay a price for it. And what is the price that God is asking you to pay? It is your obedience towards your heavenly father. Let's move on. Verse number 50. Luke chapter 1 verse 50. It says, and his mercy is upon generations after generations. Just think about your generation. Just think about the next generation. Just think about the previous generation. How God has blessed our ancestors. And we are here listening to the word of God. Just, just imagine how you have been protected by God. Just imagine how you have been guided by God. Just imagine how you have been protected by God. We all have been blessed. Just imagine how our, how our next generation is being born. Just imagine how God is providing to their needs. This is from this word. It says that, and his mercy is upon generation after generation. And they, here there is a clause which talks about towards those who stand in great awe of God, fear him from generation to generation. Amen. We need to teach our generation what we learn from the word of God. If you have learned it from your ancestors, if you have learned it from your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, that you have to fear God, you have to be in awe of God. Come on. Now I want to encourage you that we need to make these principles very made known to our children and their children. Then the word of God will come alive saying that whoever is in great awe of God, whoever fears him. Whenever I'm talking about fear, I want to remind you that it is not that fear where you tremble and you fall, but this is the holy fear, the reverent fear, the deep respect, the deep respect for God, for those kind of people, their generations is going to be blessed. Just imagine what a beautiful message is this. What a beautiful verse is this, where it is talking about you are going to be blessed. Not only you, but your generations to come. In the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, it is written saying that, I have never seen the generations of a righteous man beg for food. Today we are not begging for food, but we have excess in our kitchens. We have excess in our bank balances. We have excess of fat around our belly. We have excess of so many other things. And now we need to try to understand from where is this excess coming in. The excess is coming in because our, our, our ancestors, we ourselves and our children, because we fear the Lord, we are in awe of God and we praise God in all circumstances, God has blessed us. But sometimes we go back. Sometimes we do not praise God. Sometimes we are not faithful in praying. Sometimes we are not faithful in fasting. But today I want to encourage you that we need to go even more closer to God. Because like I always said, one step away from God is one step closer to the devil. When you go closer to the devil, the devil will try to steal, kill and destroy. But you go closer to your heavenly father, your face shall radiate with his glory. As we read from Psalm chapter 34, your face will radiate of his glory. And we need to taste the Lord. As we move on, verse number 51, he has done mighty deeds with his powerful arm. How did God do mighty deeds with his own powerful arm? In Psalm chapter 34 also we saw that the Lord himself comes to rescue the righteous. The Lord himself comes to protect his children. When a child calls upon their father or mother, even though in the middle of the night, when my daughter cries in the middle of the night, both me and my wife will get up to attend to my child. We will not say, Array, it is midnight. It is, the, it, is, it is every parent who does this. When the child is an infant or 
or little bigger if the child cries what happens when the child cries the parent will immediately attend why that is the love that is the bond that is the blood connection in the same way i want to remind you jesus christ whenever you call on his name he will answer you you know why because you have called him abba father you have called him heavenly father and when you call him heavenly father you think when our earthly parents can do so much how much more can an heavenly father do and what is the blood connection between you he has washed you and me with his precious blood he has washed you and me with his precious blood why did he do that because he loved loves you and the bond which is there every drop of blood which was shed on the cross of calvary for the redemption of your and my sin that is the bond we have that is the bond we have with god and what what does this verse say he has done great and mighty deeds with his powerful arm he has scattered those who are proud and in the thoughts of their heart now we need to meditate upon this word those who were proud in the words of their heart now we need to understand what is this words of the heart words of the heart is nothing but whatever is sown inside your heart whatever you are thinking inside your heart whatever you are sowing deep inside your heart because out of the abundance of the mouth out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks that's why whatever you store inside your heart suddenly it will come out of your mouth suddenly it will come out of your mouth so what does the word of god say whatever you treasure you need to treasure the word of god in your heart so that in the right time the word will manifest in your life the word will come like a command the word will come with authority if you are storing it inside your heart and here what it is saying the verse is talking so beautifully saying that he has scattered those who are proud in their heart nowadays it is very difficult to understand who is proud and who is not proud it is not our business but we need to as i always said we need to focus on ourselves because god is the righteous judge and let god do the judging god is the righteous judge and let god do the judging let us not judge people but let us look at ourselves it's time to look into the mirror wherever you are just say it's time to look into the mirror and when you look into the mirror you exact see the reflection of what is in front of the mirror and today if you're looking at the reflection of your heart i want to i want each one of you all to examine including myself we need to examine ourselves to understand in if any areas we are proud if we are proud in some areas it is a caution from god from a loving heavenly father saying that he wants us to submit that area under the unction of the holy spirit so that that pride can be replaced with humility pride can be replaced with humility sometimes hidden pride hidden pride is very dangerous because we ourselves are not aware that there is some pride happening somewhere and that pride will push us towards our fall sometimes we do not know why our prayers are not getting answered this might be one of the reasons i'm not saying this is the only reason but this might be one of the reasons where we see that pride is coming into picture and now as we move on verse number 52 he has brought down rulers from their thrones and exalted those who were humble now here we are dealing in this passage here we are dealing with pride and humility those who were proud they were scattered those who were proud were scattered and it also says that it also says that he has brought down rulers from their thrones just imagine how powerful our god is rulers with full of army with full of horses swords chariots everything with full power and people god has brought them down from their thrones why because of their pride and whom he has exalted god has exalted people who are humble and how will you be humble as we read from psalm chapter 34 we need to understand that we need to have a contrite spirit what is a contrite spirit a contrite spirit is a spirit wherein we need to be humble we need to we need to have a repenting heart and when you have a repenting heart repentance is something wherein you give yourself completely to god you confess with your own mouth saying that lord i am helpless i need help this is all about repentance lord i need help and when you confess your sin he is faithful to cleanse you from all unrighteousness if you confess 1 john 1:9 says if you confess your sins he is faithful if you it starts with you it starts with you we need to in intercession prayers we pray sometimes lord whether we have sinned knowingly or unknowingly god help us lord forgive us in the same way if today we need to examine our heart and see whether we have done something wrong if we have done something wrong i am encouraging you to just make a note in a piece of paper and don't put it on your whatsapp status and facebook 
<laughs> don't do that what you have to do is you just have to write it on a piece of paper confess it with god as the word of god says if you confess your sins he is faithful to cleanse you from all unrighteousness from all unrighteousness he exalts the humble verse 53 he has filled the hung hungry with good things and and sent the rich away empty handed now i need to i need to explain this a bit i want to explain this a bit he says that he has filled the hungry with good things now who is the hunger who is that person who is having hunger if anybody is hungry come unto me if anybody is sleepless and weak and heavy laden come unto me i will give you rest says the lord whoever is hungry if you are hungry to pray if you are hungry to increase your ministry time if you are hungry to increase your worship time if you are hungry to do something for god god is going to give you good and perfect things because he's a good good father and he is going to give every good and perfect gift comes from the father in heaven every good and perfect gift comes from the father in heaven and now we'll move on to the next verse verse number 54 he has helped his servant israel in remembrance of his mercy he has helped his servant israel in the remembrance of his mercy verse 55 just as he promised to our fathers to abraham and to his descendants forever verse 55 and mary stayed with elizabeth for about 3 months and then she returned home now we need to understand why did mary go to meet elizabeth she went to meet elizabeth and when when mary's voice was spoken i am reminded of this verse when mary's voice was spoken the baby inside elizabeth's womb leaped Why did the baby leap? Because it was she was filled with the Holy Spirit. I am reminded to encourage each one of you right now, saying that I am reminded to say that I I reminded to say that what I want to say right now is I am reminded to tell you that if you have the right connection with God, when you speak to somebody, they will be filled with the Holy Spirit. For that, you need to have faith, and after faith, you need to follow up your faith with your actions. and once you follow up your faith with your actions it is left to god that he is going to bless you he is going to redeem you and he is going to use you for the extension of his kingdom today what is the learning let us summarize what we have learned we need to praise god forever and ever and when you praise god forever with your mouth let his praise be continually upon your lips and when his praise is upon your lips not only you but your generations is going to be blessed forever your generation your children's children we work so hard to give good education for our children we work so hard to get a good house we get so we work so hard to get a car we get we work so hard to have the best things into our kitchen we give 12 hours 14 hours a day but what is the bible talking about the bible is saying that you need to praise god you need to worship god at all times so that not only you and your children but their children and their generation their generations will be blessed may the lord bless you may the lord keep you and may the lord make his face shine upon you amen amen if you want to receive that blessing right now wherever you are just lift up your hands right now and we are going to pray together father we want to thank you god for this nice time you have given us lord we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise god holy spirit help us to praise you in spirit and in truth in purity in your majesty and in your glory help us to worship you god lord help us to be faithful to the prophetic word on our life help us to be obedient to the voice of god and lord as we learn from mary's life that we need to praise you in all circumstances putting our reputation at stake god and we want to worship you god lord every hand which is gone up in faith i pray and i bless them in jesus name god that they are going to be obedient and they are going to stand up for their faith no matter what god and you are going to be their jehovah jaira providing for them according to their riches in glory according to your riches in glory god we give you glory honor and praise god in jesus name i pray amen amen